Hey guys, Kefford here. As part of a how to play ones tutorial series, today we'll be looking at defensive angles. Let's dive right in. So before we actually get into defensive angles, let's talk about some of the rules of the game. Well, they're not really rules, but things like map layout and boost placement can give us guidance on what's the optimal strategy for defending. Let's think about this from the perspective of an attacking player. What's the easiest goal that can be scored? That'd be one on the goal line. The closer to net you are, the easier it is to score. The further out it is, you know, the harder it is to score, not just because of the difficulty in aiming, but also because the opponent has more time to react to a shot. It's also easier to score from central areas where you have a wider angle to net, as opposed to shooting from wide areas where you have narrow angles to net. So simply based on the fact that the goal is in the middle of the field, we can deduce that the most valuable tagging spaces are closer to the net and central. That tells us that the optimal strategy for defending is to accept shots that are further from our net and to block off the central areas. Now, let's take a look at the boosts. So just in the central areas here, we have 11 pads or 132 boosts. If you pick up say two or three pads here, you can be an extremely effective defender, saving a wide variety of shots. So these ample amounts of pads also support the possibility of defending the inside, blocking off central areas around the net. We also have this U shape of pads here, which I like to call the perimeter, which allows us to shield the central areas while also providing us boost. Okay, so let's see it in action. So this is a pretty standard kickoff outcome. And there's three components to what I think is defending in the style of the inside out. So one is you wanna get high up on the opponent to prevent the crossover. So here, since I'm coming from a really high position, there is no possibility of my opponent crossing me over, which will turn me inside out, right? Uh, that is a very valuable technique and ones if you think about situations maybe not this exact situation but a situation where you go like this and the opponent has a dribble and they cross you over they now have a hook shot available where they can just launch the ball in that very difficult to save in this position so number one make sure you, you get to a level where you can't get crossed over second is you slide in so once you're at an appropriate height you slide in to pinch in on the play to apply some pressure. Now, if we look at this play, you can see there's that pinch in movement. But what if I went, say, back post? Very, very common technique to defend. The problem is there is no pressure in this area. So if I go back post, this gives enough time for my opponent to jump down, catch the ball, start a dribble, and attack even closer to my net, which is a problem, right? It doesn't. Uh, the areas around the net are the most valuable. So we want him to take shots from further out. So once you've got your appropriate height and you've slid in and you've pinched in on the play, then you start sliding. And as the play shrinks in terms of what his options are, as soon as he hits it, his options shrink. There's only so much he can do. Then you start moving and you shrink the angle to net. So this is what I'm covering. When I realize it's not going to even go to the net, then I'm just gonna start covering the rebound. So we have the height, we have the pinch in, and then we have the move back towards the net. Let's take a look at two identical shots with the only difference being my defensive angle. In the face up positioning, the ball is traveling directly to the middle of my screen. It's really hard to figure out the speed it's traveling. It's a limitation of depth perception. In this second shot, the ball is traveling from right to left on my screen so I can easily read the speed of the ball and I have more time to react as I can move with the ball back towards net. Additionally, think about the recovery aspect. It's superior in that flexible position because you land back towards your net, being an immediate asset on defense. In this face up positioning right here, you land forwards, away from your defense. So what does this tell us? Maybe we should take up angles that make the game easier to read, say at an angle and side on or backwards positioning when you know that defense is the priority. So let's take a look at some pro examples. So here, let's take a look at Justin on NRG. 
one of the best players in the world, most mechanical. And here he has a face-up read. And as you can see, he gets totally juked out on this play. Now let's take a look at why. So Justin will go up for this read. And it looks like initially a good one, but mid-read it looks like first killer might touch the ball. So then he goes for a block. And that's just due to the depth perception limitations of this game. And then the recovery aspect. He lands up field, away from defense, comes back with low boost. He's not an asset. So let's take a look at three clips from Monkey Moon on BDS. You can see here he pushes up, curves back, and that helps him make the read. If he's in net, it's a much harder read. So just that ability of being on the way back and recovering backwards helps him make the play. You can see it flexible positioning here. He's shielding the middle part of the field and pushes the ball out. You'll see here he's on the perimeter, shielding right here, recycles his movement, picks up some pads, shields again, and protects the central areas of the field. So what's the problem defending from the outside to the inside? Well, let's take a look. Right now, my opponent is not covering the net, but he will have to in a couple seconds. So if I can just go to where he's going to have to cover, because he's out of position, has to move into position, then I can just get a bump. So this is pretty much automatic. If I see an opponent going out to in, I'm always going to try to bump or I'm going to try to mind game, try to get the ball back because they're out of position. Now imagine if my opponent here went from the inside, so they went like this. They're already covering the net. They're in position so they can cut the ball off a little earlier. This is where they're covering and they would have to turn some degree right to make the save. They can go much quicker here and block. I wouldn't be able to get in front of the ball. So right about here is where I would make that block. So here are a bunch of clips of my opponents doing out to in positioning. And you can see I just absolutely abuse the air dribble bump. Because they're out of position, I go to where they have to go and I just bump them. So I feel like this is justification enough, uh, or maybe it's convincing enough for you guys to try to avoid this positioning if possible. So I found if you do this often enough, opponents will start adjusting and they'll start pre-jumping to get ahead of the bump. So you just fake the bump, collect the rebound, and you can have opportunities to score. So this clip is actually super important. He does something that maximizes his ability to defend out to end. So let's take a look at it again. I do flick it behind him and get the rebound still. And he makes a mistake that leads to the goal. But you can see here, he kind of pushes up and then moves back towards the net. So he's still doing flex positioning. It's not the strongest thing. I'm able to still generate the rebound and eventually score. But that is one way you can maximize your defense in that position. So let's take a look at this player. He tries to slide in and then eventually gets crossed up. And this is where he gets in big trouble. It's not like the last opponent who went high up, pinched in, and then curved back towards the net. You can see great inside out positioning, but then gets crossed over. That's where it gets diced up. So that height is really important to prevent the crossover. Now let's take a look at how I defend air dribbles. I'll go inside, assume this flexible position, and cover this part of the net. As the option shrink as it gets closer to net, I cover that. And then that. That's all I have to cover, just that sliver. And that's where I jump. So the defensive angles did all the defending for me. So here it is in action. I'm even able to get the boost, boost into position, into out, and just cover this angle. Extremely easy. So now let's take a look at some defensive angles. On this one, I have zero, so I just get some central pads. And I have to wait to prevent the crossover. I pinch in and then slide to net. You can see how much easier it is to defend those air dribbles versus out to in. Here's another one. I see he gets his touch out to the midfield, so I don't want to get crossed over. I go infield. I see a mistake with the flip reset, and then I'm able to pounce. 
So there's a lot of guesswork defending flip resets, but it's better than doing out to end. That's just maximizing your ability to defend. So here's another flip reset. Things like double flip resets are gonna take a lot of time to set up. This one's a slow setup, so I have enough time to go inside and just push it out. So on defense, when the ball is in front of you in the corner, you can just kind of lag behind it. This prevents the crossover. You can't dish it behind you and keep possession. So you just pinch the ball when it shrinks the angle towards net. And uh, here I get a counterattack. So defending a field, sometimes I'll get the big boost and then I'll use that boost to get my height, pinch in, slide back, and then I just get the ball here. So now I have a counterattack, and when I have possession, maybe you can guess what's gonna happen. He's gonna go out to in. This time he actually goes early, so I just flick over him. So let's take a look at this long sequence where I have uh, quite a bit of defense here. So I cover the inside, force him to the side, shielding the inside. I lag behind, shrinking the angle to net. Right, he tries to cross me up still, and I'm able to just challenge. Here I actually go in front of the ball, because I see that he's taking it back. I'm gonna go to the inside here, get my angles right, then shrink the angle towards the near post, get the save. Gonna need some pads here. Oh, maybe I can clear first. Picking pads, picking pads. I'm gonna try to stay central. Grab this boost. I'm gonna go inside, make sure I have good angles here. I'm gonna shrink the angle to net. He tries to cross me over, no problem. I'm gonna stay on the inside. He just gives me the ball, and let's run with it. So into out positioning there. Going to get high, slide in, apply pressure, and then shrink the angle towards net as I slide back. I'm gonna push up to shrink this angle. He does a good job here. He almost gets the goal, but I do make it difficult for him. I'm just gonna pick up a couple pads. And I noticed the interesting thing happened here. A lot of players will try to keep crossing you up even though you block it. So he just runs it into me. I'm gonna grab this boost. I'm gonna go into out. Even lag behind him, look for the ball here. Pinch it off him from his blind spot and get the goal. On this clip, I pinch in early, and then I guide him to my near post. He actually takes a 50, and I just pre-jump to cover any flick that he might have had. And here, I have to do out to end positioning, but I maximize my ability by going up, then coming back. And now that I have low boost, I'm just gonna look for an opportunity here, just challenge. He's gonna save that. So now we have an opportunity to go in to out and try to squeeze him towards the wall. So even in this situation, he tries to cross me up, and I just block it. Then I have a counterattack opportunity and maybe look for a goal. So what do you do if the opponent gets a really good crossover? Well, I get this boost, I get high up, but he starts crossing over. So I start running away from him, making sure he can't cross me up, but I do give him an entire goal. So I just try to squeeze him to the far post and that's where I make the save. So whenever you get beat at your near post like this, you should do a quick post-mortem and figure out what you did wrong, which allowed them to score. So just looking at this play from above, I do get to a height where he can't cross me over. However, he has a lot of time to catch and flick. That tells me I didn't pinch in enough to apply pressure and then move back towards that. At this point, it should be pretty clear what defensive angles I'm gonna take. Now, on this one, maybe you can just look at my boost management. In fact, you can go back at my other clips and look at my boost management and see how I'm picking pads while maintaining defensive angles. And I'm picking up some blind like this. And by the time I get to net, I have 72, feeling pretty comfortable. So that ends the video. Hopefully you guys are able to play some smart Rocket League. All takes some discipline and some practice. Best of luck.